good. He'll get one another. That's good. That's good. Okay. Said you were there somewhere, right? But we yeah. met in the team stage. Well, okay. Oh, yeah. And they yeah. talked to you yeah. that night. Oh. And, then, yeah. and then Burnett sent me yeah. the message saying, Come back as soon as yeah. you can. Yeah. This is the man we've been looking for. Because <laughs> hey. he had talked to you. And, uh, and it turned we out. We have. Helicopter, we managed to try from Thailand to evacuation the wounded. Yeah. Thick boy helicopter, but not big like the Ash Tankat. I don't. Thick person only. Yeah, my color. But that time, we moving from Thim Quang to uh, Pak San and we ride to Sagiang. And I tell my staff to stop, and we had to wrap up for uh, Fumino Soba, and how he's saying, you know, uh, we need our intention. And two hours later, he sent a message back. He said, you have to stop and talk here, not go to Park San. I want to send somebody to meet you in there soon and possible. And we have to dig the uh, land to make the airport for the beaver. You know? That time we don't have Eliu, we don't have Pokta, but we have beaver. And I up the ship, the Tasang and Tavian. He said, Oh, uh, Major, you can do everything you want, you know. And we rebuild later. And we destroy the Aridiang to make an airport and then for people. But three hours later, get noise. Poop, 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 poop. No. Big noise. I follow the damn young up to Tavian. And I saw that helicopter and green helicopter, a big one. I very surprised. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I said, what happened? But you come to land and uh, read there, you know? and where they did the airport. But I stay in the villa, and between the airport and the villa, have one path to the tree, you know? and have to go through and there to there or to come through there to the villa, and we have to concentrate for uh, that path. And you look, can fool me, and I go there, and then you come here. <laughs> and we made it. <laughs> Long story. <laughs> Long story, but go there. All the job we done, that not uh, easy. Very difficult to be done. For the reason political. Yeah, that's not, but you can tell. And what go down 
big stuff for a lot for Or in the airport, you know, it's just, they, they, don't, they have, you know, the uh, American up here, and they, they have a American uh, price. It's uh, out of the airport to put it there, fry a smaller airport. Oh, I'm going to get it home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But I like to go to Waco because customs are very, very easy to uh, know many people. Uh, I like to fly. And, uh, and Waco yeah. is closer to me. Yeah. You can leave your car there. They don't yeah. even charge you any car. I, I think a uh, uh, new life. I know you very well. You don't like to live uh, some plan about very cloudy. Too many people and too many things, and I know. Yeah, you should be and the flat is very quiet, you know. <laughs> Brought on fish land and there, you know. And have many deer. My young brother-in-law, he have on fish land and there. And now my young brother, son, all live in South Dalat, Texas, you know. Between Waco and Dalat, yeah, and, the, and the hill, yeah. They all live in there. I travel in there two times. And I drive in there, I see about the side set, uh, Vaco, go on in the left, and right then. See, I, I, don't live in, in the I don't live in Waco. I live about 50 miles out of there. 50 miles? Back to the north. Oh, oh by, by north of Vaco? Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. So, probably not there. Next time, yeah. if I have opportunity to come to Dala. If you're going down there, just call Yeah, I'll call you and maybe I might drive to visit you in there. Or I can drive over and see you. Yeah, you know, or you can drive over to Dala. Uh, uh, yeah, that's easy way. But much of it, you live in Baco or uh, you live in Idaho. More time. Oh, no, no, I live in Texas. I, uh, I, I, go to, I usually go to. Uh, oh, in there, in the maybe summer. one time per year only. Yeah. Uh. And then my son and his uh, wife and two grandsons, they come. Oh. They always come down there at, uh, oh. when they have the school is be out for about a week. Oh, uh, I see. In the summer, I go up there. Uh. Uh. I'd like to ask you a question for everybody here. And the question is whether when you first met in 1961, you ever thought or expected um, uh, you would have uh, this kind of a result. Uh, Hmong in America, uh, Hmong in a lot of professions, education, tragedy, triumph, mixture, you know? Okay, then I yeah, as far as I'm concerned, you know, when we met and talked, General Wang Pao was fighting for his own country. He had no thought of, of leaving Mao. He was fighting to, to keep his own country. And that only changed because eventually, uh, in order that we we had to get out of class for political reasons, and then that is what actually ended it. Not not anything, not their intention. And they never intended to leave us. I guess my question was, isn't it amazing uh, that from a single a meeting, so, you know, all these events, many events, uh, the good, uh, the bad, the tragic, uh, uh, the happy, all these events flowed, and you have 200,000 of uh, the Hmong in America. I mean, it's a question. I never thought that would happen, but what I did know, they, when they asked me when they were going to move the Hmong to the U.S. before they made the decision, how do you think the Hmong will get along in the U.S.? You know, because they're coming from a, a, a backward country. And how will they get along in the U.S.? And I said, I think they'll get along very well because the Hmong learn so quickly that 
that it won't take them too long because they'll do extremely well in the U.S. เจ้าหมุนลุ้นนั่งเราหวังมึงจะขันน่ะรู้เสียเหรอยู่ปอดสาเดี๋ยวเนี่ยอินหุ่ยว่าเจอเนี่ยอ่าอยู่ชิดถ
so the next step was to try to get them to be able to fly in life. You know? So they had a school in uh, Udorn by that time being done by the U.S. Air Force training South Vietnamese pilots, T-28s, to go back into South Vietnam. So I started trying to get them to let some moong in that school. Oh, we can. He said, those people have never seen anything but a water buffalo. They can't fly an airplane. I said, but I, I kept, and I got General Adderhold to help me. He talked, he, he talked to the Air Force, and they silently said, okay, give us, send us two men, right? And we know they won't be able to fly, but we'll try them out. So then I told Samoon, give me the best two which he did. They sent him there and they did extremely well. In fact, when they finished, the, an American Air Force guy who worked for me, he told me they're, gonna, they're graduating tomorrow and the graduating exercise is they're gonna make bombing runs. So I said, Dick, can you go over and ride in the back seat with those two guys? And when he came back, he said, they're really good. He said, I'm an instructor pilot. I've never seen better bombing runs. They're good. And that's what got the whole program started. But in this whole thing, I never told the U.S. government at all until it was already done, because I was afraid they would say no. <laughs> you know, once they say no, you can't do anything. So I think, it, but it's another proof that the, that the moon did so well once you gave them the chance. And, uh, but that, and that really turned out to, to, to be pretty much a story all over the So that's what really my father yeah. and get the money from the father's pocket and pay for the school and then train the monk how to fly. And once that gained the trust of the government, then you can set up the programs. But see, I never asked the U.S. government before that because I was afraid they would just say no. But once it's already done, say nobody no. can say anything. But you see, because I was supporting this whole operation, I had enough money that I could do that, and I didn't have to uh, say exactly. I could cover it up as something else. That's called secret work. <laughs> well, but I, I think... Secret, secret until it's no, but, but it, it, I think if you understand what you're trying to do and you have the idea, then you can do it a lot of things and because uh, I believed if you could do that that would further prove that all of these programs that we could make Laos self-sufficient and you know I think we were well on the way to do that until the war in Vietnam went bad became a political football and the U.S. decided they had to get out because of the politics in the U.S. That, I mean, that's what caused the big, the big problem. It wasn't the uh, fact that the people yeah. in the house didn't do a good job. They did. What are I go on? On the moon. To look at American Jito Toa, we have a little vision in the room. They let up and down. Lurch in one year theater. Jay Jalong Lian, number more to go. My side name. When uh, it clicked to me that how could I help resolve the Hmong hardship and Hmong difficulty, and I thought about education. And during that time, Laotian government was so poor. They could not build so many schools for people. And children who will be sent to school must be well screened, well screened before a child can send to school. Yeah. Yachu 
after I met with Belair and we talked about how we can defend the freedom and democracy at that time, but yet he talked to uh, Colonel Belair that, well, we have to develop our people at the same time when we are fighting uh, against the communism. And then we start building school for our people. And we start building a hospital to treat our people. And we start building other things that equip our people's uh, development. Um, you remember we took the, uh, you know, you, you, you picked the people, but we took one small group of the young, young boys yeah. and sent them to uh, school in Bangkok. Yeah. You know, my, my wife and her mother took care of that and they, they got them ready to go into the regular Thai schools and yeah. they all got a pretty good education. Yeah, sure. So that was really the start of, yeah. of trying to educate. And, and it was also, they, they did very well in school. So everything you tried to do in Laos, even the people who couldn't read and write, they, they, were, they were very clever at figuring out how to do things. Uh, the priority for me in that time was to work and execute the United States uh, mission for the United States. But the second priority is human development and develop my people. And we start from there. We start school, we start hospital, we have to send children to the city uh, to continue higher education, just like Bill said. If I can ask a question. In your speech last night, uh, you spoke about a life spirit, a life force, about fate. I thought it was very interesting. And I know that you have said previously uh, that fate chose you as a, a leader. And I am interested if fate, if you found fate chose you at a particular point, or if you always knew, or if something special happened. What happened so that you understood uh, that fate had chosen you. นะฮะนะฮะจ๋าหนูก็ไปให้ที่ธนมอมันให้จ๋าให้เตอวัตถุเท่าเจ้าน่ะยึดจุนจ๋าเอ่อก็ยิงมั่วขอเก่งจ
within the person. I'm thinking that to be a role model and a trustful leader, you have to provide faith to others. Prior, you tell others to be faith. So you have to demonstrate your own faithness to other people before you can teach other people, encourage other people to have the same faith that you have in your mind. So faith is something that born with me and I am always honored and tell the truth and be faithful to other people. Being a faithful leader, you have to uh, take the role model. You have to take the role model that you are already faithful leaders. And you have to keep that uh, faithness within yourself forever. Then your subordinate, your people, your population will follow your role model. And yet, if I may, you teach others, but somebody taught you. So who was your first uh, Naiku? Who, is, who taught you how to, how to lead or how to be a leader? Somebody, uh, a, a, um, a prince who was the ruler, he was a Lao alum of uh, Sien Kuang. I, I forget his name. Hi, Steve. Uh, Chao. Sai Kam. Sai Kam? Or somebody else? Yeah. yeah. เออเดี๋ยวเพิ่งจ้องก็พ่อแค่ชนะละไม่เป็นสังกะจอนจ้าวัวรงวัวตึตือฮาอย่าตูเคียก็วันเด่นแต่ว่าก็ป๊อกก
อย่ารู้ชอบโลดชอบดังเต้ตัวซ้าเดี๋ยวอยู่อัวก็อยู่จอกตีต้องนอกต่อหูซึ่งเอลีจอกเกลี่ยเนี่ยมั่วเนี่ยเชี่ยเนี่ยอยู่แต่ชีจอกอลิจ่าเอเปย์ยอนนึงอี๋อูน้องมันเชี่ยซ้าเท่าอยู่จานหนึ่งตั้นรอเต้จีแต่เดี๋ยวใจจะต่อเนี่ยมันชีมั่วนอกมั่วหูชีมั่วชีชอนะยีที่ชีมั่วนอกจอกเปย์ยอนได้ทะเลที่ชิปงเทียนยีนอ chỉ mua thì ma thì đâu nó nhớ bỏ bịt trong chứ muốn đặt tiền muốn tiêu dòng rau tới muốn chỉ đâu giờ đi nào mà giờ ô đi chạy thì thật đời thôi cho bản hạ nó nó chỉ chỉ đi lọt tri cho nên bản hạ nó lọt cho nó nó đi thế này lúc bây giờ people born with some characteristic of wish some think about themselves Some think about their own group. Some think about the poor. Some think about the leaders. But for general, when he think about his nation, his people, then he think about why we are so suffered. Uh, no salt, no fruit. And no other vitamins, mineral food uh, within the community because we live far away from the sea, and salt come to our area is very expensive. So he think about how could he mobilize his fellow uh, national uh, people to another level of life, and he carry that. Ever since to now. But is that something in VP's case that you learn in a book, or is this something that he just sort of had inside him from a little boy on up? You love me, a chichi a ying dong. That she, you mung cha cha, that you can't even mung long di jalo. That you hear that she la a chat con dao. đầu tiên mình hạ nó còn, có rồi nó còn gì, còn mua nó mua hồ, còn mua thịt cho nó, còn mua nhiêu mua tiền, rồi còn mua hồ lựu uo, rồi còn bông đó luôn. À rồi lúc này nhận được tiền rồi, một đôi giá rồi đi. Còn bây giờ lúc dù anh lúc vi dân, thì chỉ có uo mà, nếu có chỉ nên nó là để uo cho tao bỏ, là uo cho chị tao, để chị tao cho chị tao nó mới cho uo mua cho, còn nếu mà có tiền chị Uh, I born with. I did not read book, but when I see the condition of the people who live nearby and heard about the hardship of the people, that already clicked in my mind that how could I do mobilize these people up to another level. Uh, by this, uh, I began to think about the way that I can help people out, and that put in my mind and keep worrying. Ke jo na ke, ho ka sa li na le ke, ka ma mu phan suo cho nên ở tới chờ nếu thứ vả mình lớn, để lớp bồi trả lớp thứ vả mình, chỉ có chuẩn thiếu system của nó là bị gì gì người lớp bồi trả, bị ý dạng cô, anh mấy cái thủ ý dạng cô, bị cái này ý dạng cô, bị mua cho bỏ kẹp ý dạng cô chứ, rồi giờ tới khó ở đây, cho mất tiền nó nhiều quá một nhiều ý dạng, cái đấy mua chú quan tông, mua đồng tiền quan tài địa nó mỏ, cái đấy ý dạng như thế thì chỉ thôi. แต่คือย้อนนั้นมั่วการศึกษาเจ๊แล้วหมู่เด้เลยอยู่ย้อนฉันล่าหลังนะตีข้อเด็กจีต้องมั่วการศึกษาถอยนี่มั่วเต้นนะเจ้าคงแพ้เลยเจ๊หนึ่งมั่วช่วยต่อเลยเจ๊ตาเราเจอกระตูสิเขาเลยคนเว้นจังก็สุดท้ายมูจะไม่เป็นการ the people who have more investment than us 
then I began to learn their ideas and incorporate into my personal idea that how could I mobilize people uh, to another level that get out of the poverty, the hardship, difficulty life. So when I work, I keep copying people's uh, technologies, idea, incorporated into it. Then I keep telling my people that a different way of making progress in life go this. While we have Bill there here, um, Bill, if I could ask you to, to remember for the camera, when you met VP the first time, and when you talk, did you talk to VP about these kinds of things when you were questioning him? Let me add a little bit to this. If you go back, you know, I, I was a soldier in, uh, in World War II, just a young kid. And I learned, what I learned in World War II is, you know, we had a solid more than a year of combat of how men react under those kind of conditions. When they're fighting, they could die any time. How people would react, and that served me the rest of my life. Okay, then when I, I went home and I decided to come to join the CIA, and they sent me to Thailand and said, teach the people there how to fight guerrilla warfare because we can't always send an army somewhere. That's what you need to do. And I never had support from the U.S., so I went and talked to the Thai general who was in charge of the border police. That's who I worked with. And I told him what I wanted to do, and he said, good idea, I will support you. So he let me have anything I wanted. Recruited the people and got these teams ready. They were basically the first special forces in the world, these times, and they were good. And they would go anywhere in small teams. So then when I finally made contact with General Von Powell on the moon, we were able to by immediately bring in those teams and start training in different places. We were, able, I think in the first three months, we had trained more than 4,000 people. So we had a moon force on every hilltop. And the communists didn't even know what we were doing. But the famous story is, you sought out General Van Pau when he was a young man. And you talked to him for a couple hours, at least, right? And then you went back to the Americans and said, I trust this man. I'm just curious, Bill, when, when you, you had to have been asking him questions. What do you want to do? What is the Hmong like? I had already studied him for a long time. I talked to people who knew him. I was fairly confident that, that he would do this sort of thing. And, and then once I met him and talked to him, I, you know, the first thing I asked him was, you know, you know, the communists are already coming into Laos. So what, what do you, want to do. And he said, we cannot get along with the communists. I have met the communists before. I know who they are. There's no way the Hmong people can live with the communists. So we either must fight them or we will run away to Thailand. If you will give us the weapons, we'll fight. So he, at that moment with you, was already thinking about the Hmong people. So that was just consistent with, that's what I'm trying to get. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like the lawyer, I'm like the lawyer with the cross examination. Right, right. I believe that the moon would be a natural enemy of the communists. Because they're very independent people, they want to be left alone. The communists want to control everybody, right? So they're going to be the ideal people who make the great guerrillas. And they can, they walk everywhere. They've never taken a step in life that wasn't either up or down the mountain. So they're going to be more mobile than anybody. VP was talking about money was, about never, mentioned. Money was never mentioned. Never mentioned. He was worried about the wrong people. Yeah, and, and to get to just give them the weapons to resist the communists. Our money never came up until, and this is where the SDU came from. You get to a point. Okay, the first thing they did, they defended their home villages, right? So they just went back home. They were still farmers. They defended their village. There was no pay at all. But then we had to say, okay, this area gets attacked and they can't resist it. So you want to move people from this area, already trained people to help them out so they can no longer be farmers, right? So 
then you have to pay them something to support their families. And that's where the SDU, that's the SDU. I gave them the name because we, were, we didn't want to make it look like a regular army. Or maybe the Lao wouldn't like it because we never talked to the Lao government. Yeah. So that's where the idea of the SDU Special Guerrilla Unit, I chose that name myself. See? Yeah. And it my, worked. My last spot to you. ตอนนั้นตอนวันนั้นเราจะไปว่าปุ่งอยู่ในอเมริกาจนเมื่อกว่าอย่างมากเช่นเจตเป็นเราว่าปุ่งอยู่ในลูกที่เชิญว่าไ
哎，我得要有做梦啵，那要得有做鸡，我那我家，哎，铁道队那啵，反正不过，还是到底要好多，就是要好有做，都好路子，有么路选家选景呢，都有家人的，都人家的对那的，哎，老铁，抽天家老铁都那么壮观，要到我那山那哎，老铁没有抽抽抽很多。古扎，人家要很，好古矮嘛，古扎的，古穿样的，呃，不列的那那高级多呢，至少还古鲁那，都还蛮多的呢，都都还多了。呃 ，as you may know, prior American come to look for me. Uh, I already served my country under the French uh, leadership, and being an officer on the French military uh, service, there is very high discipline, okay, and French curriculum for the officer to study and gain rank. The curriculum is so high, uh, uh, so so hard. And during that time, I thought that I will try my best to be. To, to succeed to be a, a first lieutenant or lieutenant. I should be there. But when I serve my people, I keep educating myself and then working honestly with the superiors. And that time I thought, God bless me and I have the fortune to be the leader. And as I keep working, then the superiors keep breaking me up.